Hello and welcome to Rooted and Unwithered. I'm Cole Newton, and the following is an article uh, that I posted June 18th, 2023, and it is titled, Pride Month Didn't Happen Overnight. This week of Pride Month featured the pride flag flying high over the White House like a triumphant banner over a conquered foe. This was then accompanied by a pride celebration at the Capitol in which pushback against flashers forced the present administration to admit that it took things just a bit too far. Now, the reaction to such things by many who know the answer to today's most perplexing question is often along these lines. Where did all this come from? And how did it escalate so quickly? How did things go so far off the rails? In asking such questions, we would do well to remember the principle that fruit always begins as seeds. Or to speak a little less cryptically, Pride Month didn't happen overnight. I feel compelled to make such a statement because I live in a largely conservative small town where most of my fellow citizens can recognize at least some of the vanity within Vanity Fair. Now, those who don't know the difference between a man and a woman, they're out there. But we, we're rooted in reality. But are we? You see, Pride Month is really about pride, what Lewis called the great sin. For it was pride that Satan It was in pride that Satan rebelled against the Most High, and it was in pride that Adam and Eve plunged humanity into sin, and it is pride still today that has our culture openly rebelling against the ethical norms of the past. And while the month-long celebration of pride certainly is a recent development, the vice of pride has held fast the heart of the West for quite some time, specifically since the jettisoning of our belief in God. You see, in Genesis 1, we find three distinct three distinctions that are fundamental to understanding ourselves as humans. First is the distinction between the creator and his creation. The second is between humans and animals. And the third is, between, is the distinction between male and female. In fact, these three distinctions are made in that particular order within Genesis for a reason. The creator-creation distinction is the vastest because an infinite gap lies between the infinite one and his finite creation. The human-animal distinction is narrower since both are creatures and bear a number of similarities with one another. However, humans are given dominion over animals and are said to be made in God's image. The male-female distinction is the narrowest because both are expressly said to be human and to reflect the image of God together. The moral deterioration of the West has roughly followed that trajectory as well. The creator-creature distinction was the first one to go, with the creator rejected, then the human-animal distinction quickly followed, since there was no longer any reason for holding on to the Imago Dei. And with those two toppled, the male-female distinction had to fall sooner rather than later. And indeed, being the narrower of those three distinctions, it ought to be the easiest to muddle. You see, the slope of sin really is rather slippery. Although Adam and Eve were not responsible for Cain murdering Abel, their original sin really did start it all. Their treason against God's command was like a snowball rolling down a mountain. Their first sin opened the floodgates for all other sins, and it was inevitable that their descendants would become murderers, adulterers, liars, etc. And you see, in the same way, atheists and secularists as a whole are not responsible for the craziness around us, and yet everything that's happening certainly is the consequence of their worldview. Sadly, that secular worldview has a nasty habit of working its way like leaven among Christians as well. Although still holding on to a belief in God, many Christians over the last couple of centuries have embraced evolution and the notion that humans are just highly evolved animals, while also having their value of marriage as a divinely established institution eroded. The latter, of course, being the source of much Christian apathy toward no-fault divorce and cohabitation, which were simply harbingers of things to come. 
Now, to be a bit more optimistic, I will admit that this Pride Month feels different. Maybe it's the boycotts of Budweiser and Target, but I don't know, I think it's something deeper. The religious festivities have never been more blatant, and yet there seems to be a general exhaustion with the whole display, especially when it comes to the the T in LGBT. As subjective as those feelings of mine are, I hope that we are coming to a point as a cultural as a culture, a moment of decision culturally. You see, as tired as many people may be of all the talk of queer pride, the transgender issue has been the real pivot. To be even more specific, gender reassignment therapies for children has been the breaking point. For many even more liberally-minded folk who advocate for an adult's right to surgically alter their own body— have rightly recognized the horror of permanently mutilating a child's body because they have called themselves transgender. And I'm thankful for that shift in the tide, however slight it may be. I really am. But my point in all of this is that I don't want us to be content with merely cutting off the transgender branch of the pride tree. I want to uproot the tree as best as we can. Now, I'm no post-millennial, so I have no doctrinal confidence that the world will become Christianized before the return of Christ, but as an amillennial, I don't think that's off the table either. I do want to see the culture, the overall culture of the West, return to faith in Christ via a revival and awakening in people's hearts to the gospel. I do not merely want the LGBT ideology rejected. I want secularism rejected and overtaken by Christianity. I want our society to embrace the beautiful distinctions between men and women. And I also want to reclaim our belief in the creator and in the Imago Dei. I want us to recognize pride as a vice again, rather than treating it like a virtue. I want marriage to be held in honor once more. Now, of course, Pride Month didn't happen overnight, and it likely won't be uprooted overnight either. But we can start that hopeful cultural shift by uprooting the pride within our own hearts. Thank you so much for listening. For more resources for knowing and loving God's Word, please visit bcnewton.co. And until next time, grace.